Today I'm going to be showing you how you can design your own PCBs. And our real world example is going to be this Ender 3 S1 breakout board. This is the old version that I'm not a big fan of, and this is the new version that I'm working on. It has a number of improvements that make it a solid upgrade over the old Ender 3 S1 breakout board. This video is made possible by today's sponsor, PCBWay. More about them later. PCBs are best known as those green things inside of your electronic devices that always start smoking oh when you least God. expect it. If you damage one of your electronic device's PCBs, it's likely to stop working entirely. If we take a look at the standard breakout board for an Ender 3 S1, you can see it's just kind of a piece of sh My biggest complaint is their choice of connectors on this board. They have really small connectors that nobody else uses, so it's really difficult to install new fans on your 3D printer. But why would you want to install new fans on your 3D printer? Well, I've made a couple videos about that, but basically, the stock part cooling fan on the Ender 3 S1 is really bad. It doesn't do a very good job of cooling off parts, and it makes a ton of noise unnecessarily. Whenever I put a new fan on my Ender 3s, I had to custom solder one of these tiny connectors onto the fan, and that got old real quick. Here you can see the hot end heater cartridge. This connector really isn't safe for the job, so they figured they would just throw a little glue on there and hope it stays put. This thing gets over 200 degrees Celsius, and the melting point of hot glue is much below that. So you can see where you might run into some issues there. This new PCB that I made is designed to give you options. On this side you can see I populated the pins using some disconnectable terminal blocks. Alternatively, we can use the very standard XH style connectors, which come pre-wired on pretty much any fan that you order on Amazon. So you can just plug these in and you're good to go. If you want to use a third party extruder, like this one from Micro Swiss, you can plug the stepper motor into this much more commonly used XH style connector. I do like the standard extruder that comes on the Ender 3 S1. So I'm going to add in backwards compatibility with a couple pads here in case you want to use the older style connectors. That'll make it so this breakout board offers the best of both worlds. You can install it on your Ender 3 and run a completely stock hot end, but it also makes it really easy to install other types of hot ends too. I had trouble finding the connector that they used on the top of this Creality breakout board. I was able to scavenge one of them off of the old Ender 3 S1 breakout board, but I also found that just regular pin header could work for this too. This is just a standard 2mm pitch pin header, and I'm able to just solder that in place here. And as you can see, this connector can plug straight into those pin headers. And that should be sufficient to make all of the electrical connections. These pin headers probably only cost about 10 cents compared to the connectors, which were over $6 each. I'm going to finish this up by designing a 3D printed clamp that will hold this connector in place. At this point, my priority is to plug this into an Ender 3 S1 and test it to make sure everything's working as expected. So I'm going to do what we in the electronics biz call a unit test. Basically, I'm going to power this up and test each function individually and see if I can get it all working. If I made any mistakes in the design or assembly of this thing, it might cause the whole thing to break down and it could even destroy my 3D printer. This is where all the support that I get on Patreon comes in really handy, because if I break this printer, I'm out $300. So this is kind of a risky endeavor, but I think it's worth doing because... I don't know, it's just fun. So let's see if it works. The first thing I'm going to do is just turn on the power supply and see if the machine boots up properly. I have faith in my design, so let's see what happens. As you can see, everything booted up normally. This Ender 3 is super quiet, and that's because I've installed this giant crazy fan on the bottom. I mean, just look at this thing, it's awesome. Ow! Now I'm going to plug in this thermistor, and as you can see, this is the standard connector that comes wired to this sort of thing, which is the whole point of these mods. So I can just plug that in here, and if we look at our thermistor reading, it says 24 degrees. If I hit it with the blowtorch, you can see it heats up. So that indicates to me that this has been wired up correctly. Now that we've got this heater cartridge plugged in, we can test to see if these two ports work. I'm going to tell it to preheat to PLA temperatures. My lights dimmed a little bit, so that tells me that it's drawing power. Okay, you can see some smoke coming off there. I think that means we're good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut this off. Oh god, that's hot! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's crazy. Wow, these things can get really hot. So it looks like that was a 12 volt 40 watt heater element. A 12 volt 40 watt heater element should run at 160 watts on a 24 volt system. So this was drawing 160 watts and the traces on this board were strong enough to hold up to that. Now I've got a proper hot end wired up here. It should be able to get up to temperature so that I can run my other tests. I'm just going to hang this off the table down there somewhere safe. One thing I wanted to test was the part cooling fan and the hot end heat sink fan. 
So we'll plug all that in. We'll set that to full speed and see what happens. Did I make some mistakes here? I'll set my multimeter to measure voltage and we'll measure the voltage across these fans. That's reading a negative voltage, so I've got this fan plugged in in reverse polarity. The nice thing about these connectors, I can just pull these plastic things off and flip it upside down. So now you can see this one is upside down. I want to flip the other one upside down too. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull that plastic piece off. Flip it around and put it back on. Now when I plug in this fan, it should work. There we go. Fan mod, as easy as that. I mean, imagine if Creality shipped it like this, where you could just plug your own custom fans in there easily. That would be nice. And it turned on the hot end heatsink fan. So that's working as intended. Auto home. Hope nothing comes unplugged while we're doing this. Oh, there we go. BL Touch is working just fine. So the nozzle's up to temperature now, and I'm going to go ahead and move the extruder, see if we can get it to turn. There we go, it's turning! Holy cow! This is working. So first try, I was able to get this whole PCB working just perfectly. I've made a lot of progress on this project so far, but it wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Altium and PCBWay. Altium is the CAD tool that I'm using to design my PCB. It's a really capable piece of software that's great for beginners and experts alike. It's kind of like the solid works of PCB design. I learned Altium by downloading the 30 day free trial, so I'll leave a link to that in the description below. There's some great features in Altium that saved me a ton of time. I'm planning on making another video which will be more or less an Altium tutorial that'll teach you how to make your own PCBs. And I'll start out with some really simple examples. And I've been using PCBWay to produce my designs. The great thing about PCBWay is you can get started with as few as five PCBs and you can order those for a dollar a piece. So it only costs you five dollars plus shipping to get your first batch of PCBs and that can really accelerate your hardware development timeline because you're able to get physical copies and test everything out like I did in today's episode. But if you're ready to go into production you can have them produce as many as 10,000 PCBs and they can get it to me in a week. So 10,000 PCBs in a week, that's a pretty high production volume. I don't know what I'd do with them, but I could order them that fast if I wanted them. One of my favorite things is after you upload your design to place an order, they have their engineers do some manufacturability checks and make sure that everything's okay with your files before you go ahead and place your order. You also get a nice preview of your PCB. And this one looks a little bit funny because I have a black PCB and the background color is black so it doesn't show up super well. But this at least lets you see that all of your design files were uploaded correctly and everything looks about how it should. It could be really frustrating if you sent the wrong file and had them manufactured, waited a week to get them in, and then everything looks wrong. So having this preview function is really nice and it's one of the reasons that when I make an order on PCBWay I'm pretty sure that I'm going to get my parts in correctly. So if you want to see how this project turns out, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Stay tuned for more because I'm going to be coming out with another version of this and I might be selling them if you're interested. If you have any feature requests that you'd like to see in the next versions of the PCB, make sure to leave it in the comments section down below and I'll see if I can add it. Thanks for watching this episode and I'll see you in the next one.